Beer was not invented, it was discovered. And what a lucky person it was to have found it. Beer is a product of its environment, a representation of what the land provides, a pathway for life and a reason for living. Water, malt, hops, yeast. Who knew four little ingredients could make such a big impact? At Brew, the Museum of Beer, the role of beer is told as it interweaves with our world's history. And while there will be many tales to tell, Pennsylvania's is one of steadfast tradition and trailblazing innovation. It begins with the story of a new country, an ever-growing and changing population, yet cemented in tradition and eager to break into territory unknown. William Penn understood the value beer brought to his new city. He began his successful diplomatic efforts with the Native Americans by gifting them with a barrel of beer. He also granted land to Pennsylvania's first brewery in Bucks County in 1678. Soon it wasn't unlikely to find Mr. Penn's beer at county fairs and dance halls. Fort Pitt built a brewery in 1765. The soldiers stationed there said if they were, must live in such a godforsaken place, they should at least have beer. As more German settlers made the journey across the Atlantic in the mid-19th century, the hardier and more robust Dutch and English style beers continued to fill the taps. But for one settler, a traditional ingredient from his homeland would spark a fundamental shift in the course of American beer. John Wagner was the first brewer in Pennsylvania and arguably the country to bring with him an ingredient from his homeland, lager yeast. It would allow him to produce a beer that could be fermented at a cooler temperature for a longer period of time. It made beer smoother, less bitter, a taste of home. By the time Wagner arrived in Philadelphia in the summer of 1840, many breweries were operating out of big cities and small towns alike. Even Pottsville had a decade-old brewery by then, D.G. Yingling and Son. The Pennsylvania beer scene quickly grew from breweries that could fit in garages to industrial powerhouses. Names like Ortlibs, Schmitz, and Stegmar would get their start when beer was still brought to taverns on horse-drawn carriage and would become household names by the turn of the century. Growth led to larger breweries absorbing smaller ones. In 1899, 21 breweries merged to become the Pennsylvania Brewing Company. Then in 1905, 15 breweries consolidated in Pittsburgh to form the Independent Brewing Company, making for 36 becoming two in just six years. But the incredible growth would not last. A new and prohibitive chapter in the American beer story was about to unfold. In 1919, America voted to cease production and sales of alcoholic beverages. For almost 13 years, breweries were forbidden to produce their most vital product. Some chose to produce non-alcoholic soft drinks and frozen treats, while others produced and sold malt syrup. These malt syrups came with a warning label, do not expose to yeast, may result in fermentation. While the country saw breweries rapidly close their doors, some breweries in Philadelphia defiantly continued brewing, in direct opposition to the law of the land. During the 1920s, Esslinger & Son, Finkenauer Brewing, Liebert & Obert, Rome Brewing, and Philadelphia Brewing Company were all subject to federal investigations. Hundreds of breweries operated in Pennsylvania at the close of the 19th century, but only 10 remained open when Prohibition ended in 1933. It was time to get back to work, and new technology was going to considerably change how that work was done. Modernizations in producing, packaging, and transporting beer made way for macro operations that brewed millions of gallons a year and sent it to all corners of the country. New platforms for marketing led to memorable jingles, characters, and slogans. Tastes best of all because it's the driest of all. Oh, how would you like to get your hands on some of that, viewers? Take my, take my, the gold medal beer of the land. His beer, like cooler, of course, he knows what. The beer that they cheer, and serve just right, mellow, cool, and light. Take my gold medal beer.
Since the mid-1980s, America has seen a meteoric rise in craft breweries. This can undoubtedly be seen as a longing to return to the smaller, locally produced craft beers. Today, the entire Commonwealth is contributing to Pennsylvania's vibrant beer scene. With over 300 breweries, Pennsylvania ranks first in the nation in craft beer production, creating nearly $5.8 billion in economic impact. The Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture has created incentives to use locally grown resources and provide jobs and assistance from the farms all the way to the brew pubs. The University of Pennsylvania has been at the forefront of studies into the earliest forms of alcohol and the benefits beer has brought to our civilization. Brew, the Museum of Beer, will house the records and the relics of the 10,000 year old story of beer from all over the world. The story of beer in Pennsylvania will have a prominent role showing people that the history of beer is closely tied to Pennsylvania and the history of Pennsylvania is inextricably tied to beer. The story of beer in Pennsylvania will be a monument to the importance that water, malt, hops, and yeast have in the origins and continuance of civilization. Now is the time to tell the story of Pennsylvania beer.